Today we're in Seoul, South Korea, and we're exploring Gwangjang Market. We are here to eat. Gwangjang Market is the place to come if you want to eat traditional Korean street food. We have got a ton of food lined up to eat today. Seoul has a thriving street food culture and its local markets are some of the best places to sample it. Make sure you watch this video right to the end so you don't miss out on any of the incredible street food that we eat. I'm Thomas and I'm Sheena and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. Our first snack is going to be bin de tok, which is a ground mung bean pancake. And there are a number of different vendors who are serving up these gigantic pancakes. Let's go and find one and try this beauty. We've got this binde tok or mun bean pancake and this is going to be the perfect way to start on this cold soul morning. Look how crispy it looks. She just had a huge tub of batter and she was piling big spoonfuls of this mung bean batter into a very deep puddle of oil. So the hot plate is just covered thickly in oil and you can see how crispy it looks because it's been swimming in that oil. Let's rip into it and see what we can find inside. Oh, steam's pouring out. So it looks like there's some chives in there. There's some actual like bean sprouts. There's obviously all the, the gooiness from that mung bean batter. Whoa, let's give it a go. She's also given us this little tub of, of onions and I think it's going to be vinegar and soy. So let's dip that just a little bit in there and pop that in. Mm. Crispy on the outside. Tastes a lot of those bean sprouts. That's the overriding flavor. I'm going to rip a little bit more off because it's just got a Oh, this is, look at this. This is going to be a good bite. So it's got some, some good chives in there, some real crispiness, and a lot of those mung beans and bean sprouts in there. Let's give it a go. Mm. Mm. Lovely tang from that vinegar. This is a very simple flavor though. It's sort of, that would bite was tangy from the vinegar, crunchy from the the batter but the overall flavor profile is pretty simple it reminds me a lot of a potato hash brown just a simple perfect little warming dish i'm gonna have another bite though because of these these onions look at them huge chunks of onions so i'm gonna grab one of those out look at that swimming in that vinegar and soy mixture we'll pop that on top of the pancake let's give that a go together Mm. Mm. Whoa, it's hot. Wow, it's so hot. That is good. The crunch of that onion really adds a burst. It adds a, a sweetness almost to the to the mouthful. That is a great way to start a food tour of the market. Just warming. Really, that crunch is perfect. Really nice. That was a really good, simple first snack. And one of the best bits about that snack for me actually was the heated seats. So those benches that we were sitting on over there are heated so you get a nice hot bum while you're eating. Let's go find some more food. Hot sauce. We've sat down at our next little stall and we're trying Guangzhang Market's famous gim bap. So gim means dried seaweed and bap is rice. So these are seaweed rice rolls. 
and Guangzhou market is especially famous for creating what's called Maya Gimbap which means narcotic rice rolls. Now it doesn't mean that there are drugs inside the Gimbap, it just means that they're so good and so addictive. So let's just try one. So they're quite skinny and you can see inside with the rice there's some pickled vegetables, so there's some carrot, there's some burdock root, that's a perilla leaf right here and then there's some toasted sesame which is sprinkled all along the top of that seaweed. Let's give it a dunk in this wasabi mixture and give that a big old bite. That is so crisp and so vibrant. There's a real hit from that wasabi. And the pickled veggies are very tangy, really crunchy. The perilla leaf has quite an aniseed flavour, so that's really punchy as well. But what's really fragrant and aromatic are those sesame seeds. And I reckon they might have brushed some sesame oil on top of the gimbap as well because it's a really strong flavour. That is mashit sayor, which in Korean means delicious. Eating at Gwangjang Market is a really um, exciting and fun experience. You basically just wander around the market and sit at whatever stall takes your fancy. They have these pans of steaming hot food. So there's fish cakes, there's tteokboki, which are the rice cakes cooked in gochujang sauce. And our vendor has given us a cupful of this broth, which has come from the um, odeng or the fish cake. So that's the stock. And we're just drinking that broth, heating ourselves up, and then munching on these gimbap. This is such a cool day. We've stopped at our next stall and how spectacular are they with all this food lined up and at this stall we've ordered a hot stone bibimbap. So bibimbap is an absolute classic dish in Korea and this version comes in this hot stone so it was sitting on a gas burner to crisp up all the rice that's at the bottom. But let's talk through what we can see here. So we've got a whole lot of dried seaweed on top got some fresh lettuce I can see some it's a different type of lettuce we've got some cut chives oh that looks like some sort of pickled turnip I think there's a whole lot of rice and so there's a mixture down here of barley and rice so little bits of rice in there there's this really interesting leaf. I'm not actually sure what this leaf is. Just it looks like a really fresh little green leaf. There's these looking like turnips again, but these are, are pickled and covered in chili. And then we've got some big juicy bean sprouts. Oh, and some mushrooms. I've got a mushroom there in my chopsticks. The idea is you have to give this a huge mix up before you eat it. So let's, oh, and look at that sauce. So that's gochujang sauce. Look at that, just all over there. So let's mix that all through. Oh, and there's bits of cabbage sliced up in there. There is so much going on in this bowl. All right, let's get it all up. Oh, and some pickled veg as well. So some pickled greens right down the bottom. It's not, I thought it would be a little bit crispy this rice on the on the hot stone, but it's not actually at all. It's not sticking or anything like that. Let's try some of this. I've got a big spoonful here with all these different ingredients. So a whole lot of that seaweed, some chives, those green leaves that I'm not sure of, and lots of that red gochujang sauce, which is a red pepper, like a spicy fermented sauce. Let's try some of this. Mmm. Mmm. It's got a beautiful temperature. The heat is just perfect. I thought it was going to be too hot. Having come off that flame, it's actually perfect. It's got a subtle rice flavor. The gochujang sauce is the perfect spice. It's definitely spicy, but it's not blow your socks off. And then all those other vegetables are just starting to soften up because of the heat in here. Let's get another big spoon. Oh, look at all the steam coming off it. Mmm. 
So the barley has a very distinctive taste. And then the rice is far more subtle. The pickled veg are all tangy, not as crunchy as the other vegetables. It's just such a well-rounded dish. I love the little bursts you get from the lettuce. They give a super fresh crunch. And I love that you can just sit here with all the ingredients lined up in front of you. And if you want to grab more of anything, you can just grab it off, the, off here in front of you. So there's tongs, you just grab more ingredients and chuck them into your bowl. It is a perfect, well-rounded bowl. The sauce, the gochujang sauce, is the, is the big flavor in this bibimbap. It's punchy, it's warming. I can already feel it warming my body from the inside. That is a great dish. Just intrigued by these little green leaves. So I'm gonna give these a go and see if I can figure them out. Mmm. Really fresh taste. I think it's the the sprouts from the from the mung beans. So the the little shoots that come off those sprouts. It's just got that really crisp watery crunch. Let's have one more big spoon. Because I didn't even get a mushroom in that last one. So Got a big mushroom on the front of this. Whole lot of rice. Let's go. Oh wow. Wow. This is a perfect dish to be sitting here in this cold market. Steam coming out of your mouth. Cold hands. It's really warming. It just feels really good for the soul, if you know what I mean. It's sort of hearty soul food. I love this dish. Our next stop in Guanzhang Market is Raw Beef Alley. We have come to this restaurant behind us because it has been Michelin recommended and we're here to try the Yokwe, which is beef tartar. We've come into this little pokey restaurant. Everyone's sitting shoulder to shoulder. It is so packed. In the corner over there, the team is actually carving up the beef. And what is really special about this restaurant is that the beef is delivered fresh each morning from a local source. So this is fresh as fresh gets. And we've ordered this plate of a yukwe, which is the beef tartare. And it actually comes with sanakji, or the baby octopus layered on top of it. So you can see that the tentacles are actually still moving. This plate is also made up of a beautiful golden raw egg yolk in the middle, you can see there. Some spring onions, some fresh sprouts. There's a sprinkling of sesame seeds. And I think underneath the meat are some matchstick pears. The beef itself looks bright red. It looks so fresh. I cannot all wait to try it. Let's just get in and mix this whole thing up. All right, look at that. Whoa, look at that egg yolk. So that is just going to mix right through and just coat all the ingredients. That octopus is still going strong. And then I've got those matchstick pears, which look so juicy, um, coming up through the dish. All right, just gotta get in and try some of this beef, because it looks absolutely sensational. I'm also gonna grab um, some of that matchstick pear, and let's see what that tastes like. Mm. Oh. Wow. If you've never had um, raw beef before, it's not what you imagine it to taste like. It's not bloody, it doesn't taste gamey or raw. It's just a really beautiful rounded depth of flavor. That pear is so sweet and juicy. And then you've got that burst of sesame when you pop those sesame seeds between your teeth. Oh, but that beef though, that's so tender. Let's go again. I'm gonna try and get a little bit of the octopus in my next mouthful. So, some beef and then some octopus as well. All right, let's go. Mm. Honestly, each mouthful is so vibrant. That octopus is really fresh tasting. 
it doesn't have like a discernible flavor but you can sort of still feel the little suckers on those tentacles sticking to your tongue and they say that you've just got to keep chewing the sanaki or the baby octopus because it just gets sweeter and sweeter this is a sensational dish i'm desperate to try this so i'm going to grab one of these little dry seaweed wraps get some of this beef onto there whoa they're really hard to hold i'm losing it i'm losing it here we go all right let's get some of that octopus it's really hard to pick up the octopus because it sticks to the plate we've got some more beef i really want to load that beef onto there we've got over here we've got some raw garlic and some chili so i'm just going to get a big piece of raw garlic and some of this sauce which i think is a, a fermented like soybean chili sauce right got a little mouthful there we'll wrap that up let's go mm. Mm. Oh, I love beef tartare or steak tartare and this is incredible the steak is really juicy and tender the octopus gives it a little bit of bite because they're kind of chewy that air adds some crunch, some sweetness, and some freshness. The raw piece of garlic obviously had a big hit of garlic, just a really strong burst. And then that soybean sauce as well. That is an awesome combo. The seaweed flavor disappeared. I did not taste it at all because everything else just took over in such a good way. It's a great dish. I can see why those guys at Michelin came here and said that this one was a winner. It's really, really tasty. This yukwe is just spectacular. And it's not just spectacular in flavour, it is so stunning, so visually attractive. That bright red of the beef, the green sprouts and spring onions and then that sprinkling of sesame seeds. It is just sensational and this Oh, the pear just really sings in this dish and then that beef is the hero. It is just so fresh. Mm. This meat alley is a real must visit when you're at Guangzhou Market. And we got a bear to go with this meal and it is the perfect combo. I love cats when we're in Korea. It's just a really simple easy to drink beer like no big flavors so it works really well with these punchy meals that you get in Korea that was that was a great little restaurant love that meat and it's a really cool little alleyway so like Sheena said make sure you come here when you're at the market raw beef alley Guangzhou Market is a great spot to get a glimpse into local life and of course to eat. We had some delicious traditional Korean street food. So much good food this morning. I've had a great time here and like Shana said, it is a great place for a glimpse into local life. You've got all the people shopping around us now, but then all that street food to eat. So you can have a great look around and eat some incredible food. Remember to head down below, hit that subscribe button because we've got a ton of food videos coming from Seoul and also Busan. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Annyeong! Annyeong.